The Long Road to Paris is a novel set in 2008 in an around the world car rally that begins in New York and ends in Paris. It's actually a lethal combination, the first around the world car race in a hundred years and a dangerous liaison between the car's driver and his charismatic feisty navigator, an inventor who hid the nature of the car's technology, technology so revolutionary that oil exporting countries, including Russia, want every trace of it destroyed, and China, lacking adequate energy resources for their new love of the automobile, want to steal it. September 1988. All he had left were painful memories. He blinked, trying to clear his vision. It was more than the rain driving against the windshield. Tears ran down his face, and the dark, blurred images flew past the windows. He tried to focus on the lane markers reflected by his headlights. Did they mark the center of the highway or the shoulder? It was something that he should know, but he couldn't make it come together. Everything felt wrong. His head and hands moved at different rhythms. Two bright starbursts filled the windshield directly in front of him, getting larger as he watched. An ear-splitting blast from the truck's horn exploded in his head, and an adrenaline rush left him instantly sober. His gut constricted as he yanked the steering wheel, but his dad's 10-year-old Ford swerved too far and hit the gravel shoulder. He gripped the wheel as the rear end fishtailed. The car broke through the old wooden guardrail and crashed down the embankment. Branches snapped against the windshield and scraped along the sides. At the bottom of the ravine, he plowed into a tree with such force that he had only time to throw up his arms as he was hurled out. Silence, then a fiery explosion. Let's see. We've known each other almost a year now, Dr. Parker put down Ed's chart. You've made a remarkable recovery. I'm really pleased. There was a point that I honestly didn't know that you'd get this far. How do you feel? About what? Oh, everything. My body's healed. How's your memory, reasoning, emotions? How are the headaches? I still have them. They come and go. I don't remember anything about the accident. Lots of earlier things, too. I know what people have told me, but it's not in my memory. It's weird, sort of like Swiss cheese. That's not uncommon. I know, you've told me. Your MRI looks nearly normal now. Dr. Parker looked at Ed's turn again. According to your test, your factual recall and reasoning skills are excellent. I expect there will be more recovery, but after a year, it's a lot slower. But sometimes even a single event, particularly in an emotional context, can trigger complete recall. You never know. I wish. I looked at him. It's strange that others know more about my life than I do. And what about faces, people? Will any of that come back? I don't know. I've given you what research there is. There's not much. Acquired prosopogonosia hasn't been well studied. Dr. Parker closed the file folder. I'd like you to see a psychiatrist. Again? I've already been through the cognitive rehab program. I've learned how to use other cues. Smell, hairstyle, body type, context, voice, the way people walk. I think at this point part of this is psychological. I don't need to talk about it. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to do it again. Ed's eyelid began to twitch. A headache would soon follow. Well, beyond that, you need to be careful not to set yourself up for failure. What do you mean? Your mother told me that you plan to go back to college this fall. I'll lose my scholarship if I wait longer. There won't be another extension. You know, there are lots of jobs that don't require face recognition. You function fine in most areas, but you need to be realistic. Focus on jobs that don't need a college degree. I know you'll find one that will give you satisfaction. I don't want a satisfying job. Ed unconsciously rubbed the scar that split his eyebrow. Dr. Parker took a deep breath. I have a lot of confidence in you, but you're not ready for college, and I'm sorry, but I don't think you ever will be. Well, that's not your decision, is it? 
and start to get up. You're not listening. Stress slows down recovery. Okay. Make an appointment with Dr. Campbell. Oh, you'll like her. He handed out a card. Ed fiddled it with it, fiddled with it in his hand, Excellent. and then met Dr. Parker's eyes. Look, it's been a bad year. Mom's back working. Dad's taking a second job. I hear them talking at night. It's pretty obvious there's nothing for Ethan's education, let alone their retirement. I'm going to make a difference. I owe them that. Chapter 2 picks up 19 years later. Off stage, Ed became an engineering professor at Duke and eventually started his own automotive testing laboratory with two former colleagues. But his real opportunity to make a difference begins when he accepts a lucrative contract from a German inventor to drive a 1967 Beetle in the 2008 New York to Paris World Car Rally. A car that contains radically new technology with the potential to free the world from oil dependency. He is paired with a beautiful, secretive navigator, Mary Claire LeBeau. They start this intense travel adventure as complete strangers to each other.